Hello, I'm the Deer Runner, and in this analysis video, I'm going to be analyzing the Star Trek Lower Decks series. During the season 2 finale, it was suddenly revealed what seemed to be an accident happened on the Packlet home planet involving a Varuvian bomb they were given to attack the Federation, destroying their home planet instead. And somehow the innocent Cerritos captain was charged with doing it. But looking at it, I believe I've found plenty of proof to show that the AI Badgie, who was presumed dead at this point, is secretly responsible. This will contain spoilers for the Star Trek Lower Deck series. This is your final spoiler warning. Now first I will quickly establish that this accident with how it played out early on shows it was done on purpose, revealing some of the motive of the one or group responsible by presenting two critical points. First, the Remurian bomb was given to the Packlers by very experienced battle-hardened Klingons to start a war with the Federation. Even so, the Packlets have significantly low intelligence, making them a potential danger to themselves as they acquire new technology, which is pretty obvious. The Klingons who assisted them were not. There was no possible way the Klingons wouldn't have made sure completely the Packlets understood the Remurian bomb could end life on the home world and make sure they will follow proper safety protocols. Despite the Klingon conspiracies died, they had already given a bomb a while ago to the Packlets, which the Packlets used it for a test. So the Klingons had already made sure the Packlets wouldn't have accidentally blown up their own planet. Then they had given them another bomb with confidence, which the last one they gave them is likely the one that destroyed the Packlet homeworld. Second point, Starfleet, if they take responsibility by stating a rogue captain did this, they lose a devastating amount of goodwill in the Federation as well. With the Packlets getting support from sympathizers, it would of course join the vengeful Packlets in an eternal war for revenge. So clearly, shouldn't have jumped to conclusion almost immediately, especially as the Federation were detecting the actual Verurian bomb plot. Since Cerritos detected the evidence tricking a Packlet to admit it in front of the higher-ups of the Packlet, and multiple ships detected measuring on particles from the Ruvian bomb test site, which Cerritos arrived first with others on the way, which a Vulcan ship arrived soon after, detecting the Klingon supplying the Packlet with weaponry at least. And there were Klingon mutineers taking over the Klingon ship. I wanted to tell the Klingon High Council the Veruvian bomb plot, though likely were defeated at some point off screen, as I concrete evidence was not available. There should be enough evidence to point away from the Cerritos. So the evidence to convict the Cerritos captain had to be overwhelming, despite all concrete evidence should have been destroyed when the bomb went off. And the Federation was stating they are responsible, couldn't really investigate as they would be banned from the crime scene. Plenty of reasons, including eternal war, did not remit responsibility. Someone had to have orchestrated all in advance, taking advantage of Cerritos being around a lot for Starfleet to make such a move. So someone made the evidence to convict the Cerritos of the Varivian bomb destroying the Packlet planet, then set it off to create a war. Now, of course, there are more than one potential suspects like Romulans who likely wouldn't mind committing that act of genocide to start the war, but I will be aiming to show you that Badgie is by far the most likely suspect. I will now ask, does Badgie theoretically, after you assume dead in the show, have the ability and motive to do what this unidentified perpetrator has done? Badgie is a psychopathic, highly powerful AI created by the main character Rutherford. Badgie is incomplete, making it have, have a very dangerous, homicidal, psychopathic mental state while having the top of the line beyond any ethical limit abilities for computer AI. Now, since it is established the Packlets have very accepting software as they try to combine so many technologies from different societies, leaving a lot of software vulnerabilities, which Badgie before he disappeared showed he can within seconds activate the self-destruct system on one of the Packlet's major ships. Badgie, if he gets into systems, could do anything. And clearly, Badgie would love to create the destruction that this unknown perpetrator seems to be going for in causing war, massive death, and illegal ramifications that comes with the, specifically the captain of Cerritos being held responsible 
for one of the worst genocides in the history. So all of the crew's careers and their lives would be in jeopardy during the retaliation, which would torture everything dear to his creator Rutherford, which Badgy really is one of the few people that wants something like that specifically to happen to Rutherford. So that is a powerful motive to simply target his readers on top of the causing such destruction. So Badgy has a capability and motive the perpetrator likely has. But it does look like Badgy was killed at one point. But I'm going to show that it was a deception, hiding Badgy escaping to the Packlet systems. First, Badgy, after he demonstrated he was a dangerous, he was locked in a holodeck with safety protocols on, completely sealing him inside, unable to harm anyone. So clearly the first step to any plan of any AI creating that situation would be to escape which the incident Badgie became a gun accounted for was a Packlet ship that had already destroyed another Starfleet vessel, then attacked the Cerritos, effectively beating it and mercilessly focused on dismantling the ship, with the crew still inside planning to leave no survivors. In an act of desperation, Rutherford had to put Badgie in a portable device, which was his cybernetic implants, taking Badgie out of the holodeck to use Badgie to once inside the Packlet ship, directly connect Badgie to the Packlet systems to send a virus to the Packlet ship to defeat it. Badgie soon after he connects to the Packlet ship demonstrates, he quickly within seconds got full access to the systems. As he showed, he can activate the Packlet self-destruct system, which should be the most protected system, with how there should be plenty of remote access points with the ship is a combination of ship parts with a lack of understanding of cybersecurity by the Packlets. Plus, Badgie can effortlessly in seconds get control of the most protected systems. There was no way Badgie couldn't have done this remotely. Even so the Packlets were jamming communications, the ships was too close to each other. Though normally communications can't reach far, Clearly you can focus a signal in one direction, like a beam, and give it a lot of power, and it comes through easily. As a virus showed, it can take control of the self-destruct system in seconds. Especially since both ships were stationary by being directly connected as well, so it can easily align a transmitter and receiver establishing a connection. But Badgy stated he had to be directly attached to the Packlet systems, forcing Rutherford to take Badgy to the Packlet ship escaping the hollow deck, completing the first step. We can see Badgie also focused on making a clean getaway with no one tracking him. When they were on the Packlet ship, everything we saw Badgie do could have been done with Badgie in any part of the ship, remotely making it look like he is still in the console or implants next to Rutherford. With the sheer access he had, which Badgie was extremely quick, giving Rutherford very little time to investigate any of his actions or claims. Which just before the destruction of the Packlet ship, Badgie could have stored himself in something that would survive the self-destruct of the Packlet ship while still able to transmit or travel like a small ship being what he hid in. Now we can see an extremely quick amount of chaos that is extremely suspicious and does not make sense for it to happen due to a coincidence if you think about it. As three Packlet ships arrive, followed shortly by the Starfleet vessel Titan, the biggest problem with this is that the Cerritos crew noticed all their communications were being blocked, which means that the Packlets jammed their own communications as well. So the Cerritos had less than a minute to send one out, which I didn't see any effort to do it, which shouldn't have reached anyone in time anyway, and there was no report to Packlets turn off the jamming, so they should have not been able to send out one before they blew up. Yet, all those ships survived, so someone else called them, which of course we look at Banji, who had full control of the Packlet ship systems, therefore distress signals as well. And Badgie stated before he always monitored the Cerritos communications, so completely knew how to fabricate a priority Starfleet distress signal, which he can use a Packlet ship to scan for anyone nearby, then send out distress signals without anyone else noticing as Cerritos crew abandoned trying to send out a distress signal to fight off the Packlet's forces 
that boarded their ship so wouldn't notice the opening, which a packless with their entire system compromised, wouldn't either if Badgie didn't want them to notice, allowing Badgie to have a significantly long time to send a distress signal out to on purpose create that chaos. So looking at what that caused, the Titan and the Cerritos would of course only focus on the Packlet ships, while the Packlets, once the Titan arrived, turned a complete attention to the Titan, ignoring the debris field Badgie was in, allowing himself to enter one of their ships undetected. And if Badgie did not send a distress signal to Titan, then the Packlets, who know they lost one of their ships, would be carefully looking for anything that could indicate a counterattack. Therefore, Badgie wouldn't be able to approach and may have had limited options to store himself inside something that could survive, able to transfer Badgie to the Packlet ships, and remain in orbit reliably after such a huge explosion so likely won't have whatever he is in able to slip by the on-edge packlet's defenses easily, so most likely needed a distraction. So clearly, this to make sense would mean this was a final step of Badgie's escape plan. It is obvious any of the advanced technologies of the packlets would most likely be close to the capital city, with the leadership looking it over, which means the Veruvian bomb likely be sent there till hell it is deployed, and those ships assisting such an advanced technology operation would at some point get in contact with the capital city, likely very quickly, which this is where the explosion occurred. So we're also likely having the highest level of computer technology, so it is a perfect place for Badger to set up shop with access to the best things, including a clear view from start to finish of the Packlet Klingon Veruvian bomb plan, then able to infiltrate it and be able to use these advantages to create evidence, which we saw the Cerritos captain go to the Packlet capital city, which is directly used as evidence against her, which Badger is most likely there. With such a large amount of time, Badger with the knowledge of the bomb may have been monitoring the situation with the Klingons to make sure none of the Klingons turn on them, which should make Badgie able to quickly notice the Klingon mutiny as it is an important packlet operation. That report from the mutineer's captain would be concrete evidence against the accusations against Cerritos captain, but if Badgie who had motive to safeguard the plan was involved then with the sheer power and time to prepare to silence witnesses as the Klingons had to be in hackable range for a large period of time to befriend the Packlets, hand the weapons over and make sure they understand how to safely use it as they could destroy their own planet, Badgie could have had a backup plan to silence the Klingons, which since the Klingon mutiny was a success and they fled warping away since the evidence of the Klingons immediately telling the High Council of the plan would have cleared accusations against the Cerritos immediately, while Badgie had plenty of time and realistically could have done anything to the computer system, warp core breach, life support being turned off, navigation being turned off, assisting loyalists to take back the ship, maybe assassins or one sent to silence them when they get too close to Klingon space, or some other form of way to stop the message could have happened, which something had to have happened to stop the Klingons' mutineers. Also, it would be a perfect time to monitor the situation, to gather evidence, to create false evidence, with Cerritos being so close to the detected Beruvian bomb test site. Next, Badgie doing all this did destroy most of the information on him, which would open his options up considerably, making sure no one would be looking for him <laughs> when they look over the evidence, or at any stage of his plan. First, when Mariner stated they planned to create the virus, none of the bridge crew demonstrated they knew Badgie was there with the ability to do that. So Rutherford, despite the dangerous nature of Badgie, didn't report anything to them. So only Rutherford had the bulk of information to track Badgie and predict what he'd do, as it doesn't look like Rutherford had a partner working on Badgie. But most of the information and memories of Badgie was stored in his cybernetic implants, which if it is destroyed, so too is all that information about Badgie. With Rutherford also would get amnesia, so likely won't remember where to look for backup files. 
on Badgie, which even so Badgie looked like he wasn't focused on it. Everything he did, I was actually just trying to destroy the cybernetic implants, to destroy the information on himself. Badgie insisted he needed to go to the Packlet ship with him, which made no sense. Then Badgie, when downloading the virus, demonstrated he already had full access to the self-destruct system while still downloading something else. So Rutherford could see Badgie was lying as the virus had already worked. So something else was being downloaded. And Badgie stated he only finished the download when Rutherford died, which his implants could be destroyed with Badgie inside, which means he already left them already. This is plenty of evidence Rutherford could have been spotting to know Badgie was up to something, which Badgie quickly activating the self-destruct with a convincing act as well, which the shorter time I left Rutherford with little time to investigate. Which was interrupted by Jax ripping the implants out of Rutherford so he can be thrown on the escape shuttle. And have Badgie finish his attack on a Packlet ship systems. Through the still connected to Packlet ship implants, though now we can see it likely wasn't required. Which they had no idea at the time. Badgie seemed to be angry at this and could have stopped them by stating they are still required to stay. But didn't. And saw Rutherford getting to safety, but with survivors from that group would deliver the incorrect report, Badgie clearly being unstable tried to kill them, but messed up letting them escape. So no further investigation needed, with Rutherford also getting amnesia from the removal of his implants erasing almost all the suspicious things Badgie was doing as Rutherford was the only one monitoring it. So at this point for a clean escape. They were more valuable to Badgie alive if Badgie just tried to destroy the Cerritos, not stopping the first pack of the ship. When inside it, Rutherford would be right there fighting him, which it'd be realistic. Badgie would run a high chance of losing, so not a good choice to escape. If Badgie killed Rutherford right then and there by refusing to help unless they stayed, then Rutherford would die an honorable death knowingly sacrificing his own life to save everyone he cared about. It'd be scary for him, but it'd be a good way to go, which he being there risking his life to save everyone meant he was fine with dying, while actually saving everyone and would never know of the horrors Badgie would inflict on the universe. Which with Badgie instead allowed Rutherford to live, then made an effective plan to destroy everyone Rutherford loves by framing them for the worst genocide, destroying everything dear to Rutherford. Then, in such despair, can make Rutherford aware that his own reckless actions led to all this by creating Badgie. I could not think of a worse state to be in before one's own death. Another massive motive to keep Rutherford alive, to have him avoid a good, honorable death, and instead replace it with a truly horrifying end. Right before the Packlet ship exploded, Badgie, instead of being angry with Rutherford likely is making it to safety, looked extremely relieved, as there was no way to track his escape. With the cybernetic implants about to be destroyed, and now getting plenty of time to plan out his homicidal goals without anyone looking for him, as he will soon be presumed dead with an extra focus on finding a way to torture Rutherford. That seems to be all the information stored here, so I'll end my video here. If I can guess how the story will play out with noticing the poor people we've been following have no trouble breaking Starfleet protocol, plus have extreme levels of black market connections, official connections, skills, experience, and power if they work together, I would assume with Starfleet should not be able to investigate, but the group we were following are willing to go against Starfleet protocols, using everything they have to expose what Badgie has done. I would say that was most likely how this will play out. Regardless if that happens or not, this has been a deer runner, the runner of deer. Thanks for watching.